it's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rot, the show where my only talent will be finding glitter all over my apartment for the next 11 months. Today, we'll be reviewing the premiere of All Star Season 6, the variety show extravaganza, and we'll also be discussing some lukewarm Jiggly Caliente vs. Venus Delight drama because I know y'all are starved for it. As a reminder, it is still Pride Month, and if you don't like this video and subscribe to my channel, well, I might have to report that as a hate crime. I'll wait. Thanks, now let's get started. First up, goodbye Stephanie's child, she's gone solo. Jan, I think is going to have a really tough job in this competition. They probably filmed this season, what? less than a year after she filmed her original one, and she has to prove to the judges, and the fans actually, that she has grown as much or more than some of the other girls in the competition who've had years of experience living and working as Rue Girls. That said, I think she's off to a pretty good start. In the variety show, she kind of gives us exactly what we would expect, but that on steroids. She sings over an original track, hitting high notes, I think that were live, that, you know, remind me of like Ariana and Mariah Carey and also very much of like Adam Lambert from his time on American Idol. Does anyone else have PTSD from when he lost? Cause like as a young gay watching that, I was crushed. But I bet you can't name the person he lost to without Googling it. So who really won? Anyways, Jan, your high notes shattered my eardrums and I'm screaming for more. This was hot. But was it too familiar? Can she give us something more in the coming episodes? Next up, she can't dance, but she sure can squirt. <laughs> That is a talent. It's Pandora Box. This is a queen I feel like has been kind of overlooked since her original seasons because they were hundreds of years ago. But every time I see her, I smile because my nostalgia starts kicking in. I mean, like she was the original like campy, comedy, popular, miscongeniality queen. She deserves more respect is all I'm saying. And I think she's gonna get it. Anyways, for the variety show, she gives us a comedy lip sync, what she does best. The thing is, if there is anyone on this cast that I think maybe should be doing stand up, it's her, but this was funny as well. And the lip sync itself that she did reminded me so much of Aja's lip sync. It's like that viral Twitter meme where she's performing to Give Me Tonight by Shannon. Pandora Gorebox was hot. Next up, you can call her Jiggly, but Madonna impersonators need not reply. Let's talk about the drama real quick. Right after All Star 6 was announced, Sharon Needles posted a photo of Jiggly on her Instagram saying some nice words about her as a friend. Miss Venus Delights, who we really have only heard crickets from for years, replies to this and goes, meh and then girl the comment wars ensued a fan quickly jumps to jiggly's defense and said don't try to come for filipinos we're gonna drag you through the mud girl jiggly replies to that saying pay no mind to pathetic has-beens with no career and then in filipino she follows up with something that i think loosely translates to let it referring to venus rot where it came from they have nothing better to do with their meaningless gay life and that translation is something i pulled from google translate maybe y'all can give me a little more insight or maybe it was right I I don't know. And then they kind of bicker back and forth about whose resume is better. Venus says, has been with no career. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to seeing how much press and attention and offers are given to you being a background on a Ryan Murphy production. This one really got me because I'm like, wait, girl, you realize you're commenting on like the All-Star 6 cast announcement of Jiggly? What's going on here? And Jiggly says, what's your resume looking like? You haven't done a minuscule of my credentials. Take notes, toots. You might learn something. While you're trying to discredit my body of work, I'm thriving. Stay bitter. If I had as much botched work on my face, I'd be salty too. And there's a few more back and forths from both of them, but it's a lot of the same. You can actually go read all the comments on Instagram. They're still there. And Venus did follow up and give reasoning to why she left that comment on the post in a video on her Instagram saying this. If y'all don't remember, Bianca Del Rio, I guess, had a drunky night with Jiggly Caliente. And Jiggly Caliente shared a photo of a Rent Boy ad of me. And Bianca Del Rio decided to post it called me trash, ended up deleting it the next day. Anyways, back to the all-star, who is indeed thriving. Jiggly tonight does what is essentially a bitch track performance. First of all, I think she looks gorgeous, and I think her bars in the first half of the performance were really good. But I'll admit, I was watching this kind of like waiting waiting for something big to happen. Like, was there gonna be a reveal, a shablam? Was she gonna jump off the stage? I don't know, I was just like looking for one more thing and she never brought it. I don't know, I just wanna see something a little bit special. You know, she, and, and instead she just kind of like edged me for a whole minute. Uh, ow. So this definitely wasn't a bad performance, but we also don't give out free hots over on this channel. Jiggly, I love you, but this one's gonna be a rat. 
perfect. Next up, just call her Kylie. So can we just like for one second appreciate Kylie, Sonique Love? She's literally perfect. So I think her variety performance was a really healthy mix of just like being gorgeous <laughs> and then also singing, well, lip syncing an original song. Like I think her taking this to a more slower kind of jazzy place really stood out among the bitch tracks that were in the competition today. Plus I was genuinely surprised at how good her vocals were. Kylie, Sonique, I'm in love. This was hot. Next up, she's giving us talent and foreshadowing, which will make sense if you've already seen the second episode. Hotter rod on that coming soon. So Raja sews a dress in a minute, or so she would like us to believe, right? I thought there was a lot of fun and novelty in this performance. We've never seen something like this necessarily on the stage of Drag Race. That said, I think we have to call a little bit of shade because it's not like she made this whole dress during the performance. She pretty much just like sewed up a hem or two and then slipped it on behind a little curtain thing. And I don't wanna brag or anything, but like I did learn how to make a dress in seven minutes from Bob on her channel. So like. Like, you could call me a seamstress. So I think starting out with this over halfway completed is a little bit of a misrepresentation of the performance. But then again, being a drag queen is all about misrepresentation of what you really are. So in the end, I guess she had the last laugh. This was hot. Next up, another one. Another one. Another one. DJ Khaled. It's another bitch track. This time from Akira C. Davenport. Undoubtedly, Akira looked great. The performance was high energy. This would be amazing in a club. I'd be screaming and throwing dollars at her. But I just cannot help but always think back to Aja's bitch track on All Star Season 3. She set the standard for this like category of performance. At this point, I'm like, if you're not voguing with a samurai sword doing three rig reveals and two outfit reveals and jumping off a box six feet in the air while rapping your bitch track, I'm not interested. Just kidding, but the standard has kind of been set. This was cute, but not for me. This was a rat. Next up, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, 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 Power Ranger the Bad Tech. That was actually a really funny joke. It just sucks she didn't get the delivery on that or the other jokes in her set. Oh my God, Trinity, this broke my heart. And she was right, everyone was right. Comedy is one of the hardest things you can do. Stand up is, oh my God, it takes balls of steel. So there's this concept in the entertainment industry where sequels are pretty much never as good as the first. And unfortunately, Trinity made that mistake. Like she tried to make the light bill jokes funny again by reversing the situation where now her light bill is being run up by grandma. However the delivery on the actual jokes were all missed. Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. She's a great drag queen, but with those delivery skills, she'll never get a job as a gynecologist. <laughs> Ooh, that was a rat. Next up, you found it. It's Eureka. So her performance is a tribute to her late mother. She lip syncs to an original song about coming together, kumbaya, circle of life, all of that great, beautiful stuff. And this could have fallen flat, but there were two things here I think she did that were very smart. Number one, there's a music video being projected onto her dress, which is like the size of the entire stage. We've never seen that before. Very cool. And number two, it's a tribute to her late mother. And I think because of that, she kind of played the I dare you to criticize this card to the judges. Like, how are you gonna say something bad about the girl that's, you know, doing an homage to her late parent. Which like, hey, I'm not knocking. If I'm ever on Drag Race, I'm going to bring my dead dad up at every turn and chance I get. I'm gonna make him be there for me one way or another. <laughs> Woo! Anyways, this was hot. Next up, turned on, the feeling is mutual. So Scarlett's performance is a bubbly, literally, burlesque number. And I love burlesque because it's so adaptable. You can make it funny like Bindula did in her All-Stars run. Have you seen Violet Chachki splash around in that giant martini glass for Work the World? <laughs> More like Wet the World. Basically what I'm getting at is that it's hard to slip up in this type of category. Mm, less her name is Pheromone. Sorry, too soon? Anyways, Scarlett made her sexy and funny. Plus, she did the crazy bubble show with the giant wands, the little wands, the blowing. I mean, it was it was great. There was reveals. She had the big bubble titties. And like most importantly, she commanded the entire stage and gave us something very visually interesting. I guess you could say she blew the other girls away. This was hot. Next up, Munch Munch. Crunch, crunch. It's silky. So she did a, in her words, can I take you to church, piano singing number. And honestly, 
I kind of feel like this performance was really overlooked by the judges. And like, not just overlooked, but like, disregarded like she was in the bottom and that left me confused i was like the lady played piano and sang live that's not easy and i do get what the judges were saying it could have packed a bigger punch at the end but so could a lot of the performances tonight and i always find it more interesting when the queens do something truly unique reading into the show's narrative a little bit looking at how they treated this performance i do think this means they are going to be tougher on silky this time around it's not going to be an easy skate to the top four she's competing with a lot of talent and a lot of queens who know how to get that camera time. I think this cookie came out of the oven just hot enough to eat. Next up, wig. Did she just say wig? Oh my God, I feel that. But also, I don't feel that. It's Arena Cha Cha. Okay, firstly, this is another pitch track, but what was going on with the baby powder on the first wig in the beginning? Was she trying to create a manual fog machine? I don't know, either way, it didn't work for me. And secondly, what were these wigs doing there in the first place? Like, unless they were actually going to be a part of the performance, which they weren't, why are they there? It kind of felt like she just wanted to promote her business. And look, from one businesswoman to another, if you're gonna go on All Stars to promote your business in the variety show, then I think you need to make sure that A, I carry a Davenport does not not trash talk your wig before the season even airs. And B, the wigs that you put up on the stage prop need to actually look good. Like we've got Miss Frizzle on the left, Nursing Home Christmas in the middle, and then Walmart Sia on the right. I'm like, really queen? At least though, she looks good. Her glow up is great. And the wig she's got on her head looks great too. So like, why not put one of those good ones on the wig stand? And yeah, we've already talked about how I'm not a huge fan of these bit tracks because they're so overdone, but this one was lacking substance from beginning to end. All I'm saying is my wig was not snatched. It's firmly in place and giving me a headache. <laughs> this was a rat. Next up, first she's sweet. And that's it. It's Ginger Minge. So firstly, I don't think there's a sweeter, more kind-hearted person in this competition. Bless her heart. I have to give her kudos on the look, which is super fun. She looks like straight out of Candyland or something. The little raincoat, the apron, the hair buns, perfect. But the song, I have a couple questions about. She did this original number, dancing and singing to a song about eating gummy bears, which I feel like maybe she took a little too seriously. Like it was so serious. This is something you could put on like a kid's TV show or Coco Melon. And I mean, you wouldn't even know it wasn't made for that. And in that sense, I'm like, I don't know that I liked it because I don't really want to feel like I'm at daycare watching a drag show, but I know that kids would love it. I just want a little deviancy, a little perversion, but maybe I'm just not the intended audience for this. I can recognize that the lyrics in the song were all very good and in that sense, definitely hot. But it just wasn't for me personally. This gummy bear was so sweet, it left me with tooth rot. And finally, you can call her Jiggly too. It's Jada. This is the perfect foil to what we just saw from Ginger. The producers knew exactly what they were doing, putting the goody goody two shoes performance right before the giant titty jiggling drag clown insanity that we saw from Yara. And I love this because I think Jada saw the line, crossed it and kept going. And that's why it was successful. I think these types of performances are maybe not for everyone because a lot of the newer fans of Drag Race, in my opinion, from what I've seen, are really used to and into the super polished and sometimes takes itself a little too seriously drag that they see from queens like Jan and Rosé. And the thing with Yada is, I think she's not afraid to look at the stupidity in what she's doing and enjoy it and embrace it, which is just personally what I love to see. And apparently the judging panel does too. Jada, what's your Venmo? I'm ready to give the queen a fucking dollar. This performance was hot. And our bottom two this week are Serena and Trinity, which in a almost never happens rare occurrence, I 100% agree with the judges' decisions on this. I think of the bitch tracks, Serena had the weakest and Trinity's standup was so bad it never made it onto its feet. And Yada takes the win, which I was also happy with. I think her, Scarlett, or Jan all could have deserved a win here. All very memorable and unique performances. This was a moment though where I was like, ugh, I really don't like the lip sync assassin twist thing that they introduced, what, what last season? Because I want to see the best two of each week go head to head in a lip sync for the win. But the assassin, whatever, it's happening. We're going to deal with it. Coco shows up, love that. And they do a Bruno Mars song. And like, maybe there's a performance out there by some queen that could really work this song, but it apparently wasn't really either of them, although Coco was undoubtedly better. I kind of have a little conspiracy theory that Jada maybe threw this lip sync because she's a really fierce lip syncer, and I just didn't really see the fire from her. And this would make sense considering she was going on and on about how difficult being in that position was. So I think she did. 
The gag, though, that we find out next episode is that she actually had Trinity's lipstick, and she was the only queen besides Serena to pick that one out. So obviously that was awkward, and speaking from like a strategic competition standpoint, I think that was not a smart move at all. Like, if you're gonna do that crazy elimination factor thing where you send home, I guess you could say the, the bigger competition, you kinda gotta wait to pull that one out till later, because you do that early and everyone's gonna be side-eyeing you and wondering what your true motives are. I mean, to win the money obviously but my point is you become a target so serena goes home first could have saw that coming from a mile away i also did an exclusive reaction to this entire episode available only on my patreon at patreon.com slash queen that's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive benefits like early access to my videos exclusive videos access to the bussy queen discord server and more join my patron family at patreon.com slash bussy queen the link is in the description this week my hottest I've got a split between Scarlet Envy and Yada Sophia. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot over on patreon.com slash queen, and this week they've chosen Scarlet Envy. I want to say thanks so much to you for watching this video and my patrons who make my channel possible. I also want to give a special shout out to Scott Williams and Pika Fox, who've just joined my Patreon at the here. And Aiden Smith, Ali Al, Anna Miriam, Anthony, August, B-Rolls, Bradley Cameron, Cherry Bobbins, Christopher, Clea Moosedale, Georgia Leather, Dr. Martin, Evan, Fabio, Fractalize, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kevin, Kiki, and John, Madam Muffy, Markowitz, Maddie Morissette, Millennial Hissy Fit, Nathan, Opal, Pasquale Nava, Queen, Sassy Canister, Ron, Shannon, Chazzy, Sky, Tammy, Thomas, Timotheus, Timothy, Tony, Travis, Unique, Vendetta and Wheelie, who were all supporting me at my hottest hot tier. And Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Felicia, Goaty P, JB, Joseph, JB in Dallas, Laura, Luke, Matthew, Mike, Nurse, Luca, Robert, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, and Triton, who were all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See you later. Love ya. Bye.